Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Tops Tales. Today I have my What I Read in September video for you. This is pretty much a wrap-up of the 13 books that I read last month. And to be completely honest, I'm pretty surprised I was able to get through as many as I did because I'm actually working two new jobs and still adjusting to that, did some volunteer work, just had a lot going on. So I'm actually pretty surprised I was able to do as many as I could. I was pretty determined to get through as much as I could. And I will say my TBR from where it was at the beginning of September to the end changed a bit. You'll notice there are a couple books that I added and a couple books I took off, but for the most part there are some books from the September TBR that are going to be bumped to October, and you'll see that in the October TBR video that I'll be doing tomorrow. So, anyway, let's get into the video. Really quick, the book I'm currently reading, because I know there's definitely some interest in this, I was not able to get through the Passage Trilogy. I'm almost done with the first book, that's what I started at the very end of this month, and so far I am very much enjoying it. The rest of the books will be on the TBR video that's coming out soon, and both all three books will end up in the October wrap-up video. So, just wanted to briefly mention this one because I know there's some interest regarding this book. So, just like with the rest of my wrap-up and what I read videos, I'm going to rank the books from least favorite to most favorite and do the star rating and then get into the meat of the video with the mini reviews and kind of talking about them. So the first book is one of the ebooks that I had floating around on my Kindle. It was The Book of Joan by Lydia Luknovic. One star. Now we get into the physical books. So we have Last Girls by Demetra Brodsky. 2.5 stars. Violet by Scott Thomas. 3.5 stars. Foe by Ian Reed, 3.5 stars. Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar, 4 stars. The Night Swim by Megan Golden, 4 stars. The Dark Game by Jonathan Jans, 4.25 stars. The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry, 4.5 stars. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James, 4.5 stars. The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan, The Marsh King's Daughter by Karen Dion, 5 out of 5 stars, Obscura by Joe Hart, 5 out of 5 stars, High Lonesome Sound by Jay Wells, 5 out of 5 stars. So the first book I want to talk about is my most disappointing read of the month, and that was definitely Last Girls by Demetra Brodsky. So this book, unfortunately, it should have been a new favorite of mine. I had high expectations for it, it seemed like a book that was tailored for me, and it unfortunately did not meet any expectations of mine, and because I was so invested in it, the fact that this book just didn't work for me was pretty heartbreaking. This book follows three sisters. You have Honey, Birdie, and Blue, and they live on this basically a doomsday prepper compound in Washington State with their mother, and they kind of have a double life. They have their life at school and then there's home life and after an incident that happens at school that involves some other members of their compounds and potentially exposing their compound because they're supposed to keep it secret, there's a, some stuff that starts to happen and the sisters start to question some things and you know it goes from there. I'm keeping it very vague because I feel like there's a lot that I could spoil on accident with this story, so I'm trying to keep it fairly vague. I expected this to be a survival story, and it didn't really end up being the case. I mean, there's a little bit towards the end, I will say that, but this book, its big fault is that it tried to do way too much, but also didn't really know what it wanted to say or what type of book it wanted to be, and I'm not talking about it in a you know, cross-genre way, because I love a lot of books that are multiple genres and do a lot of things. But this book, it's very awkward, and there are several storylines that do come together, but they detract from the power of a story. If they just focused on the sisters or just focused on the other storyline, maybe that might have been better, but there's almost like a, there's a kidnapping element to it, there's a weird... Uh, potentially fantasy ESP element. There's just a lot of very unrealistic stuff that happens. It doesn't follow a lot of logic and the 
main characters were a little bit annoying and over the top too. Um, I try not to see too many reviews before I do my own review, but I did see one negative review that coined the term Manic Pixie Dream Prepper Girls, and that is totally the main characters of this book. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, it just, it was just very disappointing, and I gave it 2.5 stars to be nice. Really, it's more of a 2 out of 5 star book. I think I just liked a lot of the outdoorsy descriptions, and I did feel like the author did a very good job with the terms, like the preparedness community terms and survival terms. I, myself, am somebody who's big into emergency preparedness and outdoor living, wilderness survival, that kind of stuff. So I really appreciated that. I thought she did a good job researching that. It was just a bunch of other stuff that started happening, and the book went in directions that I didn't really care for, and I just felt like it was, at certain points, just over the top with a lot of what was happening. So, unfortunately, this book was not great and is definitely my most disappointing of the month. On the flip side, my favorite book of the month was High Lonesome Sound by Jay Wells, which, if you see my TBR video, I think I accidentally refer to Jay Wells as a man once or twice. Jay Wells is a female author, and I thought that was really cool. I had no idea that Jay Wells was, I mean, I hadn't really heard of her before, but now I think it's cool that I've read this book, I got towards the very end and realized, oh, I'm reading a book by a female author, and it didn't change my opinion of the book at all, but I just thought it was kind of cool to support a female author. This book was fantastic. I had no expectations of this book whatsoever. I just picked it up because it was suggested to me online because my library, which is the King County Library System, one of the best ever, I love it. If you live in Washington State and you have access to it, definitely take advantage of it. It's a great library system. And it showed up as like a suggested book on this one page of another book I was checking out. And so glad I did. This was awesome. This book, it's, I'm not going to give too much away. I think the, the fact that very little is given away on the back of the book is great. I don't tend to like it when a lot of books you know half of the plot or like three-fourths of the plot on the back, especially if it's supposed to be a mystery, suspense, thriller, horror, something to it. I don't like spoilers. I don't want to know everything about the book when I go into it. So this book does take place in a small town. Um, it's in like Appalachian uh, Hill Country in Virginia. And if you liked Devil's Creek by Todd Kiesling, you're going to like this book, although they are definitely different stories, but they have similar elements that I really liked. This one's a little more low-key, I would say, and a little bit more atmospheric at times. This one has everything from a mountain granny who does witchcraft to this super religious deacon who has some secrets to this one 18-year-old girl who may have some magic powers, and there's a down-on-his-luck horror author, so the cast of characters is just awesome. There are multiple point of views in this book, but everybody is distinctive enough that you never get lost, and the writing is great, the voice of the characters is fantastic, that you really can picture this small town, and it's just a lot of fun. It's definitely very creepy from the very beginning, and even when you start to know what's about to happen, it's still very eerie and just well described. Just If you are a fan of horror, I highly recommend you check this one out. It seems to me that this is a underrated gem that I haven't really seen other people talk about, but I hope more people check this book out because I, I thought it was wonderful. I enjoyed every second of this story and really makes me want to go pick out more J. Wells books and see what else she's written because this was fantastic, very creepy. Pardon me, almost wishes I had saved it for October, but that's okay. I am so glad that I got to read it in fall, and I definitely hope all horror fans give this one a shot, especially if you like really good folklore, small town setting, um, Appalachian setting, 
with a solid cast of characters and just a kind of a unique unique town feel. This is a good one. Another favorite book of mine for the month was Obscura by Joe Hart. This is my favorite thriller of the month and it's a contender for one of my favorite thrillers of the year. If you like Blake Crouch books you will love this one. I flew through this and wow it was so well done. It's a fairly short book. I think it's only like 300 something pages. Yeah, 340 pages, but it doesn't feel like that at all. It just, I swear I'm so glad that I read this on my day off because I would have been wondering what's happening. I wouldn't have been able to focus on work because I'd be wanting to get back to this book. So I did read this on my day off. And this one, so it takes place in a very slightly near future. It's 2028 and this is in Earth that's been really harmed by pollution and climate change. So basically when this book was written it was 10 years into the future. Now it's a couple of, we're, we're slowly inching towards 2028. But we follow a scientist who she's been researching into this disease called Lotion's disease because her husband died of it where it's almost like Alzheimer's but it just causes you to forget your memories and lose who you are slowly to the point where you basically just expire and it impacts everyone of any age and there's no rhyme or reason to who gets impacted by it but they're pretty sure it has some kind of genetic and environmental combination to cause this disease and she ends up getting chosen to go participate in a research opportunity on a space station because her daughter was also diagnosed with it, her six-year-old child. I think she was, she's either six or eight. And um, she's really worried about her daughter and doesn't want to lose her daughter because that's all she has left of her husband. And they, you know, had a great relationship until he started losing his memories. And so she takes this opportunity. However, the mission is not what all that it seems and when she gets up into space there's something very wrong up there and it goes from there I don't want to spoil anything more you don't need to know too much to get into the story but wow this had a fantastic plot pacing setting description character development all of that like it is definitely a fast and furious story but it also has some wonderful creepy scenes a lot of dread I wouldn't necessarily say this is a horror story it's definitely more of a sci-fi thriller however there were a couple scenes that to me were very creepy like very eerie got under my skin gave me the shivers kinda bothered me a little bit in a great way like I thought it was awesome and there's something very powerful in this story too that I haven't really seen done in other sci-fi tales. Um, and I don't want to spoil what that element is either. I will say that the main character does struggle with an addiction, which was interesting to see. I thought it was accurately portrayed and thought it was good representation. And it parallels something else that happens, happens in the story. And I won't say anything more about that. Just go pick up this book. If you like Dark Matter, Recursion, any Blake Crouch books or any fast-paced, fun sci-fi thriller books that kind of have a unique twist to them or make you think this is a very good underrated little gem of a thriller. Another book is The Dark Game by Jonathan Jans. This is like my third Jonathan or fourth Jonathan Jans book at this point and this is a pretty solid read. It's focusing on 10 different horror authors who get invited to this retreat in the middle of nowhere by this very famous horror author who's a bit of a recluse at this point and slowly one by one they start to disappear as they confront their demons I don't want to give anything more away but that's pretty much the intro plot to this book and for the most part I would say it's a fairly straightforward story um, but if you're a horror fan, I think you'll really like it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of And Then There Were None, but with horror writers. And towards the beginning to maybe the middle portion, there are a lot of people to keep track of. I think that there may have been a 
few too many characters because you do go through almost every single person's POV at some point or another. It's told in third person, but still it's a lot of people to keep track of. At a certain point, there are fewer characters, and then it's easier to follow, and then it's a pretty solid, straightforward story. But um, in the beginning, it was a little much, and, you know, that was tough. But overall, I liked it. There's definitely some gore. There's some really creepy imagery, and I feel like this would actually make a pretty solid movie or maybe a mini series. I also do happen to really love um, stories like this where people disappear or have to confront their sins or there's, there's, there's a lot of tropes in this that I personally really like. It's also in the middle of nowhere and there's a cool thing that's happening with the main writer dude and I, I, I had fun. It's a very fun book, um, you know, good for this time of year and good for horror fans so if you like if you like to kill creek i think with the um horror writers as characters then i think you'll like this too so definitely give this one a shot next book is clown in a cornfield by adam caesar so this one was my most highly anticipated read for the month of september and part of me had contemplated putting it off until october but i couldn't wait so I went ahead and read it and for the most part I did enjoy it so I gave this four out of five stars and I think part of it for me is that I read a lot of horror as you know and I tend to prefer adult horror as compared to YA horror I think there are some good YA horror books out there but I think it falls into the situation of PG-13 horror movies and R-rated horror movies that for the most part the R-rated horror movies tend to be a little bit better. They tend to be scarier, more intense, and not afraid to go places the way that PG-13 horror movies tend to hold back. So I think that was the case with this book because I've read several Adam Caesar books and really enjoyed them, especially Video Night I think was probably my favorite. And this one he writes a very well-done novel, so, you know, it's put together well, it's written well, it has character development, all of that, but it's not a very scary book. I think he, by trying to get into YA, I think he toned it down a little too much. I could have enjoyed it being ramped up a little bit more, um, because the scary stuff, like, doesn't even happen to like, page, I think... 101 or something like that? Not 101, but like, it it takes a while for the scary stuff to happen. And that's totally fine, because I do like some slow burn novels, but for me it just seemed like, because this is a fairly short book, and it's also, you know, written in pretty big font, the fact that it takes a while for things to start really happening you know, I think it detracted from it a little bit, like the pacing was a little off, um, and nothing super scary happened. There are only a couple of spooky scenes for me in here, so really it feels more kind of like a, again, more like a young adult kind of action thriller novel with some mystery and, you know, some good atmosphere. Like, I really liked the setup of this book, and I did enjoy the characters for the most part. I think that Adam did a good job capturing what teenagers are like. I live with a teenager, so, and I work with teenagers, often with uh, scouts and stuff, so I know what they're like. And uh, I think he did a pretty good job with this. He did a good job um, coming up with the town and the lore, and I, it hooked me. I just knocked off the star because it wasn't really a horror novel to me and compared to his other work it's not up to par with his other work but it's still worth reading like a four out of five star is still a good book in my mind heck even a 3.5 is still decent it's still worth checking out and you know i'm also big into going and reading books for yourself to make sure you know, you form your own opinion. Um, I just like to make sure I can steer people away from 
stuff that might not be the best. And this is still fun. I think it'll be a really good October read if you haven't checked it out already, so give us a shot. Just know it's not very scary, and there's also a couple elements to it that I thought were a little weak, but they go into spoiler territory, so I'm not going to spoil it for you, but, you know, give it a shot if you'd like. Next book I want to talk about is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. The reason why I want to bring this up is because I did really like this book. This is the book where I feel like it is objectively one of the better reads of the month for me. Like, it's well done, well written, it's a good book. But, the reason why I knocked off a star on this, um, despite it being a just objectively, like, well done, like, I can't really sit here and be like, oh, it's, there's, this is wrong with it, or this is wrong with it, or this, or anything like that, um, it's because this book has to deal with a rape trial. So, what I've discovered for me is that I tend to like thrillers when there's crime. I almost always prefer it to either be a murder or like a bunch of people dying. So maybe like a spree murder, serial murder, serial killers, something like that. Or maybe like occasionally if you have like a well done theft story who done it. I do like that. But this was harder because it just, it's a heavier book than I was anticipating. I wanted a fast-paced, fun thriller that was a bit of a nail-biter. And this is more of a procedural type story to begin with. This pacing's a little off for it to be a true thriller, I would say. It's definitely a mystery, and it has elements of a thriller, but I never really got that accelerated, intense feeling. And also, to the... Uh, it would go back and forth between investigating a case that happened years and years before and a current case where it's basically a rape trial and this um, podcaster, she is covering the trial but then she also gets sucked into the previous case from like 30 years before what had happened in like the late 80s, early 90s with this one girl who had died. So I found that to be more of an interesting story than the rape trial coverage mainly because I, I don't know, it was just kind of a heavy story and it wasn't quite as exciting. It's, it's important. So it's an important novel, especially with like the Me Too movement and all that, but it just wasn't exactly what I wanted and I kind of wish that it had been marketed differently. Like if it had just been, you know, not hyped up as this like, oh, I'm put a put downable thriller that'll have you biting your nails and keeping you up all night. Um, because that's what I was expecting it to be. And then when it turned into something a little bit different, I was a little disappointed. So that's why I did knock off half the star and just kind of want to mention that to people, especially because there's a big trigger warning for this. Um, it goes into, you don't see the act of violence happening, but if you have been sexually assaulted or anything like that, it does go into the process of dealing with a rape trial and it's not great I could see it being a problem for a lot of people who have gone through that. So just know that will happen quite frequently in this book, that there's just a lot in that that just was just not really fun to read about. And it just, give me murders. <laughs> Bring on the murders. I don't really necessarily want to read an entire book that has to deal with rape trial. But same time. It was objectively good, so I am glad that I read it, and I am interested to see more by this author and check more of her work out. Um, I did really enjoy the podcast element; I thought it was pretty cool, and I think I'd be interested. To, uh, I'd be interested to see what this would be like on audiobook as well to see if they change things up a little bit. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on Night Swim. The next book I want to talk about is The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry. This book I picked up on a whim at Target, and I'm so glad that I did because I did really enjoy this book. I thought it was very good on the atmosphere, definitely very creepy. It's also a coming-of-age story centered around Lauren, who is a 15-year-old girl. So it was kind of fun to have a girl-centric coming-of-age story. We don't tend to have as many as we do that focus on boys, so that was 
fun and entertaining, and it's a period piece, so it takes place in the 1980s. And this takes place in a small town where two girls are found brutally murdered, and several characters are trying to figure out what is going on, and it looks like there is something possibly supernatural afoot. Lauren is also grieving the death of her father, who is also found mutilated in the woods by the ghost tree, which is one of her hangout spots. She also has to deal with her best friend turning into a stranger and becoming super boy crazy, and Lauren kind of wants to just hang out in the woods and play games and kind of their, their disconnect. So I really liked this book. I felt like it was not afraid to be graphic and intense. I I feel like this is marketed as a young adult novel. I thought it was a young adult novel, but I do have some doubts now because it does really feel like at times it is very intense and graphic and gory and deals with some tough dark subject matters that why oftentimes doesn't touch on, such as like Clown in a Cornfield, for instance, which I felt like it shied away from its true potential as a horror novel. Like, it, it was kind of getting there, but then it would kind of pull back a little bit. And this book didn't pull back. Same time, though, the the way it was written, it did sort of feel like a YA novel. I don't know. It's, it's hard to categorize it, but if you are someone who reads YA and you're looking for a horror book, and you're okay with handing some intense stuff, this would be a good choice. Or, if you're an adult reader and you just want a good coming-of-age story that's pretty spooky and definitely is, you know, intense and is pretty much a adult horror novel in terms of the dread and suspense and dark subject matters, then this is a, a good choice. Like, I thought it was well done. Um, I do think that some of the characters weren't as developed as they could have been, and there were a few things that could have, I think, to tighten the focus of the book. There are a few things that could, probably could have been cut, um, but for the most part, I really liked it. So I believe I gave it 4.25 out of 5 stars, so I definitely highly, recommend, I definitely highly recommend giving this one a good job. The other contemporary that I read for the month of September was The Astonishing Color of After. This one I read mainly because it's a favorite book of several of my friends and so I figured that I want to give it a shot and I am usually will mix in a contemporary or two to kind of be like a palate cleanser in between horror books because I don't want to read so many horror books that I get burnt out of them so I usually try to change things up every so often. This book follows a teenager, her name is Lei, and she loses her mother to suicide. And a little time after her mother had passed away, she's approached by this red bird, and this red bird drops off a package, and inside is filled with a bunch of um, like letters that are written in Chinese, pictures, a bunch of stuff that she realizes belong to her mother and her grandparents. She's never met her mother's parents and so she feels like there's this side of her that's missing because she lives in the United States. She's mixed race, her father is white American, lives in Pennsylvania, and her mother is originally from Taiwan. So seeing this package inspires her to want to reach out to her grandparents and then she and her dad who is actually a professor of East Asian studies so he's actually fluent in Chinese and very involved in Chinese culture the two of them fly to Taiwan to go meet with her grandparents for the first time and the story takes off from there it's very magical realism because it's pretty quick that she's not hallucinating the red bird, that the red bird is actually real, and she begins to relive memories through incense, and it's just a very creative story, very well done, well written. The food descriptions are awesome. I love Chinese food, and I see why I would really like Taiwanese food, and there's some just delicious descriptions of tasty tasty food, so I was just like salivating the entire time reading this book, and it's heartbreaking, there's a lot of great re revelations and discussions, and 
it's definitely an eye opener to a lot of different things, especially coming from two different cultures and the struggles that one would go through if you are a part of two or more cultures. The only thing I didn't like about this book is that the main character is an artist and she's obsessed with describing feelings and other things by color, but it'd be very specific colors and she would do it all the time to the point where it, to me, got to be a bit annoying because I'm like, okay, I know you're an artist and you experiencing things a certain way, but it was just like all the time and it was a bit distracting. I think that if the author didn't use it quite as much, it would have been a little bit more powerful, but because it happened so frequently and at weird times, it just got to be a little irritating. But for the most part, I did really enjoy this. Do recommend it if you are looking for um, sort of an impactful, heartbreaking story that has some really cool magical realism elements and some beautiful imagery and great descriptions of food. Gives my shop. Next book I want to talk about is The Marsh King's Daughter by Karen Dion. This book I was not originally intending on reading this month, but the more I thought about it, the more intrigued I was, and then suddenly I just had to read it, so I put aside one of the other thrillers I was planning on reading in favor of this one. I really liked this story a lot. You follow a main character named Helena, or Helena, and she was raised in this kind of swampy area of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan by her father and her mother. However, her father had abducted her mother when her mother was 14 years old, and her mother gave birth to her when she was only 16. And she and her mom were basically captives of Helena's father for like 14 years. And then they finally escaped. And then it gets to present day when Helena is a grown adult. She has two daughters of her own and a husband and a house and a business. Her father ends up escaping from prison, and she has a feeling she knows where he's going, and she realizes that she's the only one who can track him down because the authorities have been led astray. She knows her dad, she knows what's going to happen, so she decides to track him. So she goes off, and the story goes from there. This takes place... This book is told in a lot of flashbacks, so it's... I really enjoyed this story. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It's kind of a book for me, um, especially because I had read My Absolute Darling earlier this year, and it has a similar-ish plot, dealing with like a complicated relationship with a father who's abusive and has a lot of issues, and about the daughter overcoming that, and there's, there's a lot of plot points that both books hit on. But this one didn't have the icky incense... Or, this book didn't have the icky incest or the just really, really heavy scenes or the filler because this book is tightly plotted. Like, the story is constantly progressing. Even if it doesn't always feel like it is tightly plotted, a lot of this is told in reflection because you get to really know what happens to Helena as a child, how she grew up. I found that to be very interesting. Um, I'm a big outdoor person so a lot of the outdoor descriptions were really neat and I will say there are lots of scenes involving hunting and butchering of animals because these guys were living in the middle of nowhere for many years so they're living off the land so if you are sensitive to that just know it's not overly graphic but it's in there and I do know that it has upset some people so I should mention that and I really liked it again it's it's not a super fast-paced thriller, like, I feel like the story progresses well, but it's not a popcorn nail-biter type thriller. Once you get to the end, it does get to be pretty intense, and I liked the climax and conclusion, but it's really the story of Helena and her life and growing up and sort of confronting her father at the end. And she does have some very mixed and conflicted feelings towards him. Like sometimes it seems like she really loves him. Other times she's like, oh, he was awful. And I understand what was going on with my mother. But I felt like that was very realistic because for 
a good chunk of her early childhood, she looked up to him, she emulated him, she cared about him, and he taught her a lot about the world, so the fact that as an adult she'd have some mixed views I, I thought was really interesting. So I thought she was a cool character, loved the setting, definitely want to go check out the Upper Peninsula now. It sounds very beautiful up there and very rugged and intense. And if you're looking for a good outdoor thriller that's not like a super intense thriller, but it definitely has a little bit of a mystery as you figure out exactly what happens to certain characters. And it's just a, I just think it's a really well done, good, dark story. So definitely recommend checking it out. Next book I want to talk about is Violet by Scott Thomas. This one, um, I ended up giving 3.5 out of 5. I thought about bumping it up to 4. I've gone back and forth, and that might change my mind at some point, maybe rate, rate it a little higher. This book is Scott Thomas's second book. I read his first book, Kill Creek, earlier this year. Loved it. Gave it a solid 5 out of 5 stars. Really enjoyed it. And was eager to check this one out. Violet is different. Like, totally different from Kill Creek. The pacing, the character development. There's just, there's a lot that is very different from Kill Creek. To the point where it almost feels like it's written by two different authors. Which is not a bad thing. I wouldn't want to constantly be reading a rehash of Kill Creek over and over by Scott Thomas. So I'm glad that he decided to go ahead and, you know, do his own thing and write a completely different sophomore novel. This one, I, I liked a good chunk of it. And I think objectively, it's actually a pretty good horror story. You follow a main character named Chris and her daughter. Chris is grieving for her husband who died in the awful car crash and she decides to take her daughter up to a family-owned vacation home to get away because her daughter has become selectively mute and she's having difficulty processing what's happening. So she goes to this house. However, the vacation home that's owned by her family, her mother had passed away in from like many, many years before from cancer. And so it's already kind of going from one house that has grief to another house. And it's pretty much your classic haunting tale. And I think that's what, for me, fell flat a little. If I hadn't read as many horror stories as I have had, I may have rated this a little bit higher. But I felt like I've seen a lot of the stuff that was in this before. And because it's very slow burn, um, like it took a while for me to really get into the story, it took a while for everything to get set up, it's very detailed at points, almost maybe too much, which is something I rarely say, but I do think that there was a lot. Um, like, I think, and I'm a fan of slow burn stories, but I do think this was a little too much, even for somebody like me. And I just felt like I called a lot of the things that happened, and it just seemed like it was a mishmash of a lot of different horror stories. But it was still well done, so it's not like it's a bad novel, it's not poorly written, there's, you know, nothing bad, you know, awful about it, it's just for a big horror fan who's already read a lot, it didn't bring anything new to the table. There was nothing new or fresh for me to experience. I feel like a lot of even the creepy imagery, I'm like, I've already seen that, seen that, experienced that kind of deal. So. That, coupled with it being a little hard to get into at the beginning and being a little too slow at times, is why I gave it 3.5 out of 5, but I still liked it. I still liked a lot of the reflections and the writing was good, and, you know, I didn't hate it like some people did, um, but I also didn't love it like others. So, I, for me, it was kind of middle of the road. I'm glad that I've read it, but if given the choice, I would definitely reread Kill Creek over Violet. The other 3.5 out of 5 star read for me this past month was Faux by Ian Reid. I really enjoyed I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. That was a surprise hit for me, really enjoyed it, read it earlier this year and thought it was awesome. I enjoyed my experience, It's I own my own copy because I just had to go out and pick one up. And I was really eager to read 
his follow-up book. So I'd put on the li hold up library a couple months ago and it came through and I was very excited to read it this month. For the most part, I, I liked this book. I didn't love it and I didn't hate it. And I kind of felt in the middle of the road. I did give a 3.5 out of 5 star because I do think the concepts it explores are really neat. I loved the setup. I liked the ending a lot, and it's the type of book that makes you think. And I may, we'll have to see if I bump it up. Sometimes this happens a little bit if I like think about a book long enough, and I'm like, well, maybe I actually did like it because it stuck, you know, stuck with me or something. I think for me, this book, and I'll explain as I kind of get into the plot a little bit, but I guessed what happened very early on. Um, so in this book, you pretty much, the setup is, it's near future, you don't actually ever get a specific date. You just know that it's somewhere in the near future where they have self-driving cars and they're going into space, but it's, you know, people still live on farmhouses. This couple, main couple in the story, you have Junior and Henrietta, who goes by Hen most of the time. They live together in an isolated farmhouse in the middle of nowhere among crops and they kind of keep to themselves. One night they get a mysterious visitor who's driving this very creepy car with green lights and they're not expecting anybody. Turns out it's a man named Terrence from this company that uh, produces self-driving cars and he says that Junior has been chosen to be a, basically a finalist and potentially going out into space. Junior is confused. He's like, I didn't enter a lottery, I didn't enter a contest. How has this happened? Turns out that they've been spying on people, and they said, oh, it looks like you've been interested in space, researching space, all that, posting about space, so we took your name based off of that and entered you into the lottery. It turns out that this thing is not uh, optional. He has to go at some point, but you know, they keep discussing it, and before Junior goes, they talk about potentially sending it a replacement for Henrietta so she's not left all alone because that was a worry of his and they're like yeah you know this will be basically um, artificial intelligence that's going to be exactly like you and she won't miss you and then when you come back you can just easily take your place back and the story goes from there I don't want to say too much more about that I think this will be a great book discussion and book club book because you can really talk about it. There are some pretty interesting theories that I looked up after I finished this book. I looked up what other theories people may have had and there's one I came up with that I kind of want to share at some point so maybe I'll do a more in-depth book review of this. I'm not sure. Um, I do think it's a smart novel. Like Ian Reed is a very intelligent man from what I gather from his books. I mean, even the title is a play on word for foe, F-A-U-X, which plays into the story, I think. Um, that's my guess anyway. I'm not actually 100% sure, but um, I think it's well done. I just, because I knew what was happening, this book relies on that twist. The book relies on that too much, so it falls kind of flat in the middle and like for whatever reason it took me a while to get through the middle portion because I already knew what was coming and I you know I wish I hadn't figured it out but it just for me felt too, a little too obvious I felt like well wait really really and so that's why it felt like it was long and drawn out so I either wish that it was less you know that you didn't you weren't able to figure out the twist at the beginning or that the book didn't rely on it, or that they turned this into a novella, maybe? Like, I mean, it's a short book, but still, it felt longer, and it wasn't as gripping or exciting to me as I'm thinking of ending things was. The twist in that book just... I didn't see it coming. I was just blown away. I thought that was really cool. Um, and so that's why this one was still good, but it didn't live up to... I'm thinking of ending things. But is it worth checking out? I do still think it's worth checking out, so definitely give this a shot. The last one I want to talk about is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This is the author of The Sundown Motel. I read that book earlier this year. 
I feel like this is a theme of this video all of a sudden. Um, and once again, I liked the first book I read by her a little bit better. This book is still well done. I thought that the atmosphere was great. It's creepy. It takes place in Vermont in the fall, so this is a very good fall read. And it's part ghost story, part murder mystery, and it's told in a dual timeline, basically. So this book follows um, present day. There is a character named Fiona, and she is still kind of obsessed with the death of her sister and hasn't really found closure of her sister's death that had happened 20 years prior. The body was found on Idlewild Hall grounds and Idlewild was a home, or not home, but like a boarding school for wayward girls essentially. And then you go back in time to 1950 with these girls at the school and what happens and one of their characters, you know, one of the girls in that timeline disappears. And then there's a body found in present day, and then after a certain point the two stories do connect, and it's very cool. There's also the ghost character named Mary Hand. Not a spoiler, it's at the very beginning that there's this folklore involving Mary Hand haunting the grounds, and I liked that folklore aspect and thought that was very cool. And yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think I liked the 1950s timeline a little bit better than the present day, which is supposed to be 2014 timeline, because um, I liked the friendship between the girls, and I liked the creepy, spooky elements that were happening in that timeline, because that seemed like there were more ghost things happening, as opposed to the present day timeline was more crime focused, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, I gave it four and a half out of five stars. I just don't think that the mystery element was quite as powerful in this as it was in the Sundown Motel. So I think that there are a couple elements tying into the conclusion of the story that I wish were tweaked a little bit or made a little bit stronger. But other than that, I did like this quite a bit. I think it would be a perfect fall read. Great for ghost fans or thriller fans, mystery fans, you name it. It's a good one to pick up. That's pretty much it. I'm actually just going to gloss over not talking about the book of Joan. I don't even want to think about it right now. It was just that bad of a book. You can go to my Goodreads and check out my thoughts and feelings about it and why I gave it one out of five stars. Also, just briefly want to point out that the passage, almost done with it. I have like 20, 30 pages left, something like that. Um, really loving it. Can't wait to get into the rest of the series. I have plans for the month of October. I want to get through this book and then the two follow-up books before I get into the rest of the TBR. And I will be uploading my TBR video tomorrow, so stay tuned for that because it's filled with tons of spooky, fun, horror, and Halloween-focused books. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, rate, subscribe, and let me know what you're reading. And if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought about them. So I hope you guys have a great night, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.